Hello, Brad Nelson. Another FlexSim tutorial for you. This time I want to focus on changing the graphics or the look of both the processors and the material flowing through our model. I have a simple model here, duplicated, that just delivers the default item. It's a looks like a kind of a brown cardboard box to the standard looking processor, which is this green kind of conveyor belt thing, and going to a queue. There's nothing wrong with the model. They both perform perfectly well, but to me, they don't really tell a compelling story. If you're trying to show someone uh, a proposal for a system or demonstrating how the software can be used, this isn't particularly uh, convincing or um, compelling as a, as a model to show them, depending on your objective. And for some cases, it's not at all about the look. It's just more about the logic or the timing. If you want to improve the look of the model and make it a bit more realistic, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Let me just do a quick reset here. I'm going to leave one of these models alone and I'm going to play with the second one just so that we can see the difference as we progress. If you choose one of the processors, and this can be, um, this holds true for the processor, the sync, the combiner, separators, any of these fixed resources, you can change how they look exactly the same way that I'm going to show you here. So I clicked on the processor, and if we look in this under the Visuals tab, you'll see the default is a 3D model of a processor. If I choose the pull down under Fixed Resources, you can, you can see the, the models of the other processors. There's also a Workbench processor. So this would be the easiest way to change the look to something like this, which is, I would say is a little prettier than the default processor, but still it doesn't really represent any real thing. It's kind of like a fictitious machine. If I do a reset and run the model, you can see the material flows through it across it just the same way as it does the default processor. So we haven't changed how it behaves, we've just changed how it looks. I think we can do a little bit better than this. I'm going to go over to a website called 3D Warehouse. It's by SketchUp. You may know SketchUp as a 3D CAD modeling software, but they also host this excellent website with three-dimensional models. I would like to do a CNC machine for our model. If I do a search for CNC machine, the first, the default search is going to come up with not very many good choices. It's because it's finding ones that are in the product catalog. So these again are items that a store or a commercial outlet has supplied as commercial products that can be purchased. Let's go over to the Models tab instead. And now I've got 381 items that match my CNC machine callout. And you will find there's a lot of different choices that you can make here. I would also, if I can find an example here, this is an excellent model with looks like a lot of detail. We do not need this kind of detail in our model. And I would actually advise against using something this complicated or this complicated or this complicated. It's just going to make the model size larger and that gets incorporated into our FlexSim model. And it it's more than we need. So I think you need to find a model that strikes a nice balance. This Mazak would be a good choice. Um, CNC router, if you're doing woodworking, that may be a good choice. Okay, so you have to pick and choose what out of here you like. Um, I'm going to go back to that one that I spotted earlier. So this general CNC machine. There's a download button available for all of these. And you do need to have an account at 3D Warehouse. So the first time you click on this, and if you aren't signed in, um, just give it an email and set a password. Uh, it's free, and uh, so there's no obligations, and and I, as far as I know, no restrictions on um, the, the amount of models you can download. I tend to pick the latest version, the whatever the newest SketchUp model is available. So I'm going to click download, and that goes on to my hard drive. I'm going to switch back to my model then, and go back to my processor, and now instead of picking one of the existing images, I'm going to select Browse at the top. That's going to take me to my directory. There's the model that I've downloaded. 
and it comes in and replaces the 3D model of the processor with my new 3D model. Now, that looks great to me. It's just a nice, fairly simple, believable looking CNC machine. I also got lucky on this one that it's about the right kind of shape and size uh, and orientation for me. Uh, so if I right away just reset and run the model, now my cardboard box runs through the CNC machine. The one thing that you might need to change though, when you bring in a model from uh, the 3D warehouse, you might sometimes find it comes in really gigantic. 3.3 meters by 2.77 by uh, short of four meters high. But if it was designed in centimeters, this might come in as 333, 277. So you need to shift the decimal points. Or if it was drawn in inches, uh, this if this is a hmm, two meters, that would be 72 inches. So this might come in at 72, and then you have to change or convert this down. Um, so you can either go in directly and say, well, how many meters do I think it should be? Or you can use these uh, the square boxes on the handles to just manipulate it on the screen until you're happy. So you might need to do a little fiddling to, to make it work. I'm still dealing with cardboard boxes though. Um, and I would like to now change the look of the product that's going through. This is a little bit more difficult. You have to go through a couple steps to do it. But if you go through the steps, it gives you something that's very, very flexible. So I think it's worth doing. So if you bear with me, I'll show you the, how to do it. Come over to the Toolbox tab, beside the Library tab, the Toolbox tab, and the first item on the list is the Flow Item Bin. If I open that, I have a list of the standard items that can be sent through the system. Double-click on any one of them, and that pops up this new editing window. That this is how each of these items is actually defined. So this box, if you want to know, is 0.6 meters by 0.6 meters by 0.3 high. All right. And we want to create our own version of flow items, of materials that could be sent through the system. I find the simplest way to do that, first off, is I tend to figure out which of these basic shapes is kind of the closest to what I wanted to do. If I want really small balls for ball bearings, I would start with a sphere. If I am uh, cutting logs or something like that, or rolls of fabric, I might start with a cylinder. In my case, I want to do a machined piece of steel or of aluminum. So for me, I'm going to start with a box. Here is a uh, function that lets you duplicate. So I'm selected the box. I hit this duplicate, and I've now created a new flow item that's currently called box copy. And if I come over here, I'll find here's the properties for this new box copy item. And I'm going to go and change that. Okay, so now the name of my item is machine block. It doesn't look any different though. So now I need to add some different appearances to this thing. And in FlexM, we do that by defining new shape frames. Uh, I want to create a new shape frame. I want to create a new appearance for this. And my first shape frame is going to be uh, the rough block before any milling. And now I've got the same pull down has appeared. And I can go back and browse. And I'm going to go to, so I'm going to my uh, own directory here. And I've defined three objects, or three three-dimensional objects. The first one is a rough, first, uh, first mill, and drill. So I'm going to pick my first one as a rough. And it was just a simple block. Um, so this works. And now I'm going to add another shape to, or another sort of appearance to this item. Um, I'm going to call it first milled, and from the pull down, browse, and pick my milled part. Okay, and this threw me for a bit. Okay, it doesn't look any different. And what I discovered is it's kind of 
upside down or sideways from the way I drew it. And this is where I find Flexim is a little bit weird. Um, let me just show you. So here's the block that I drew. I drew this in Shaper 3D. You can do this in Fusion 360, Shaper 3D, SketchUp, of course, or any other CAD modeling software that you like. Um, and in sort of the more what I'm used to, with the X across the horizontal, Y on the vertical, and Z coming out of the page um, as an orientation, that's the way I drew it. But in FlexSim, it comes in this way. <laughs> as, so a little bit different. And you're going to have to play a little bit. I found then with the way my model was oriented, if I rotate this 90 degrees and then 180 degrees and minus 180 degrees, and maybe there's a simpler combination, but now that is oriented the way I drew it. Um, and you can see if I reset the view, that's the same way that I drew the piece. It's not positioned correctly anymore, so I have to kind of move that back into place. You need to play around a little bit with the positioning and the sizing in here. The nice thing is you only need to do this once and now you've got this properly defined so that you can use it in your model. And now I'm going to just pick my final appearance to this model, drill, and open it. Okay. You can also change colors. Um, I'm going to make mine sort of a blue or blue-gray as a machined part and call that done for my model. Before I go back to the FlexSim model, one kind of odd thing about uh, the system is however you leave this, whichever shape frame you have selected here will be used as the default sh uh, shape frame in the model. So if I'm going to deliver this from the source, I don't want it looking like a finished piece. I want it to look like the rough block, the sharp cornered, sharp edged, unmachined piece of aluminum. So I'm going to set this shape frame to point to my first, the, the first way I want it to, to look. So in my case, it's this rough block. Now I can go back to, I'll come back here and get out of the flow item bin tab and move back to the model tab and select my source. Now I have the item defined, but I'm not using it yet. So if I click on my source, it's still set here, uh, still set here to show the box. I want to change that. And now instead of this normal list at the bottom, I have my new flow item, right? Because I've, I've defined a new thing that I can pass through. If I reset and run my model, now I've got this these machined blocks or these rough blocks passing through instead of this brown box. Okay, that's great. We're making progress. This looks closer to what I want. But I still have this processor taking in a square block and outputting a square block. I need to change what it looks like. Here's how to do that. It is going to involve one more thing that I need to teach you. But but this is it. This is after this, you've got all the tools at your disposal to take complete ownership of the look of your model. Okay. If you click on the processor, I want a, I want to have an action happen. I want to change the look of the material when the processor uh, when the processing stage is complete. We do this with what's called a trigger. If you click on the processor or your separator, your combiner, whatever you're using, at the bottom of the list of the properties tab is triggers. You might need to collapse some of these. If you have all of these different tabs open with statistics and so on, because the triggers is the very last one, it can disappear off the bottom of the screen. So in order to find it, you might need to uh, 
you know, collapse these down to make room or to bring this triggers into, into view. There are no triggers by default, but there's a little plus button, so I can add a trigger. And now you can see I've got a bunch of choices. When do I want this trigger to happen? When the setup is done, when the processing is done, when the part comes in, when the part goes out, uh, on a reset, right? Or, or when this receives a message, this is more of the internal logic. For me, very simply, I want to do when the processing is done. When, when the processor is done at CNC machining, now I want the thing to look different. So, so I've created a new trigger, but it doesn't do anything. I have to now say, what do I want to have happen when the processing is finished? So I got to do another little plus button here. And there's a bunch of things that you can do. These triggers are very, very powerful. You can change the label of the part. You could change its name. You could set a tracked variable. So uh, you could be, keep track of um, how many pounds of steel or how many kilograms of steel have run through or how much coolant has been used or however, how much uh, processing time has been run. If there's something that's not already being tracked by FlexSim, you can add it as a tracked variable. What we want to do is under the visuals option, there's a change 3D shape and a change shape frame. And we've been playing with a shape frame. This opens up this little option window. And what I've also learned is you need to change from current to item. So pull down this <laughs> pull down this little option here and change the default from current, change it to item. And now we have to pick the frame. What do we want the frame? What frame do we want to use when the processing is done? Uh, and this is where I can add, if I had multiple processors, I would do the first one would change it to first milled and then I add another processor and that would have a trigger that would change it to drilled. Um, in my case, I'm just going to go straight to drill to make it more uh, sort of visually obvious that we're working on it. This is also, for example, where you might have like a bottling plant. So you could draw a bottle as your first shape frame. An empty bottle is a short, first shape frame. So I would take a cylinder. That could be the base frame. Then I would bring in my own picture of a bottle, make that the first shape frame that's empty. Then I'd have a fill bottle and that would be my second shape frame and then I would have a fill bottle with a lid on it and that would be my third shape frame and then a filled capped bottle with a label could be my final shape frame and as the same item flows through my process I just have triggers to change the shape frame to the next one or the, the next appropriate one. So I think we're there if I do a reset cross my fingers and hit run. I've got my rough block coming in and I have my machined block coming out. Okay. And in my opinion, this new model, although it behaves and operates exactly the same way as this one, I haven't changed the logic or the timing or anything, this tells a much more compelling story. This is going to impress your audience, impress your boss, <laughs> impress your client, uh, impress your prof, and because it looks like something, it looks like a real process. I still want you to label these different things, like change this from processor two to CNC milling machine. Um, but I think that this change in graphics of the processors and of the items is worth the effort. I hope you found this useful. This is probably the most complicated tutorial that I'm going to show you. Um, good luck with your modeling. Have fun. I'll see you in the next tutorial.